the word presbyteros in Greek means old people. During the time of the fighting between Bible and this and that, they are old. They say, you know what? We don't want to get trampled. We are old, so we want to gather here and learn. So they gather themselves and they learn the Bible. They became presbyteros, Presbyterians. And then the Methodists rise up and say, Woo, we're going to read the Bible methodically. We don't want any Roman influence. So they became Methodists. And then each and everybody. So they have, everybody have their own. But the King James... The English people later on in the year 1611, by King, King James I, he gave the authorization that the Bible should be written to follow their tradition. And so they write King James Version of the Bible in the year 1611. Why the Bible according to King James? Why King James? Why do you write a book and you say the, re, revise the King James Version? Why King James Version? If it is from God, why do you say King James Version? And if you have the King James Version in the third edition on the preface, it reads, The King James Version of the Bible has so many grave defects, and these defects are so many and so serious as to call for a revision. These are not my words. These are, I'm quoting from what the Bible said. I didn't write this. The Bible is in the Bible today. The King James Version of the Bible has so many grave, you know what is grave defects? You know, like I'm coming from the east, you come from the west, we crash, scatter. Grave defects, defects. And so serious, <laughs> these defects are so many and so serious as to call for a revision. So you have to revise it in the year 1952. So if we have to go back to the ancient manuscript, the Codex Vaticanus, Codex Alexandrius, and Codex Sinaiticus, these are the anci three ancient, main ancient manuscripts of which we have the New and the Old Testament inside of it. Paul inserted so many dogmas that are contrary to the law of Jesus. He canceled the law of Moses and Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, Do not think that I have come to destroy the law of Moses and the prophet. No, I have not come to destroy. I have come to fulfill. Heaven and earth shall pass, but a dot from the law shall not pass till all is fulfilled. And whoso therefore cancel the law from the book shall be called least. In other words, you go to the hellfire. And whosoever do the law shall be called great. But today we have people canceling the law. They write their Bible at their own will. Everybody's writing his own. Canceling the law. And the last book of the Revelation said, whosoever take away from this book, may the plague of God be upon him. People are putting in inside it. They believe in miracle now. Miracle is only a test. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 24, he said, for there shall arise many false prophets and false Christ who will show you many great wonders and signs if it were possible to deceive the very elect. My own disciple will be deceived from miracle. Miracle is not a test. It was only given to God Almighty to the prophet so that they could do it and people would know that they came from God. So if David Copperfield lived in 2,000 years ago or Ziegfeld and Freud, these guys who do magic, if they lived 2,000 years back, they will become gods. Believe me, they will be, people will worship them. Because I was in New York when David Copperfield came and he made the start of liberty dis disappear. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was skeptical. I was watching it, but it's gone. So if it, imagine 2,000 years ago, people would believe him and they would worship him. So Jesus, he knew. He said, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, Jesus said, These people, they worship me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrine of men. Men like Paul, who canceled the law of Jesus. He never met Jesus. But he said he canceled the law of Jesus. So, for instance, I would like to stop here. I have so much to share, but I, have, I, will, I, will, I will stop here. So, during question and time, you could take me up and I will uh, explain further. From man, it was bread from heaven to feed them when they were in the wilderness after they were set free from Egypt. Within that ark was also the rod that budded. The, the rod that God told specifically each of the elders of the 12 tribes to cut and to be given to them as a testimony of the living God. And Aaron's rod budded. In other words, the plant of that rod, whatever it was, a limb cut off of what type of tree? I think it was an almond tree. It flowered, but it was cut off. It flowered because of the miraculous power of God. And it was also a testimony of the living God, just like this book, just like the Ark, just like the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant also contained the Ten Commandments, which are also a testimony of the righteousness of God. Could any of these things save the people? No. Not only is the Ark a 
type or a symbol of the testimony of their experience with God as they traveled along. Their different experiences are noted in scripture. This is the reason why the historical aspect of the scripture is giving you a chronological or step-by-step -step process of what they go through. Okay? So that you have a way, a uh, timeline, a way of seeing the origin of things, the origin of life, where it began, the origin of meeting God, the establishment of the relationship, how it was established. This is important. Let no one deceive you in thinking that these details are not important. People may misuse the details and manipulate them for their own purposes. Just like Cain manipulated the use of fruits and vegetables to make his own sacrifice to God in his own way. Because in his own mind, this is acceptable, I think, in my heart. This should be good enough. But it is not appropriate because it was not according to God. It was not according to obedience. Therefore, it was not accepted. It is not because the vegetables and fruits were not made by God. It is because it did not coincide with the sacrifice that would be given on our behalf. This is important. Don't believe every spirit that talks to you and tells you. Do the research for yourself. Because you will be accountable to the living God for yourself. Another thing that's important, Abraham was of Ur, okay? He came out of the family of Shem, but he lived in a city called Ur. Whatever the language was of those people, which scholars and historians have found to be people of the Mesopotamian Valley, Sumerian, Akkadian, you name it, they were in that valley area. Abraham came out because God told him to leave them. Whatever worship form they had in Ur and in those regions, those early societies, Abraham was told to leave all of that. I will take you, God said, to a new land that I will give you. Along with that, they develop a new language, which we now call Hebrew. So when you look at Jacob, who is the grandson of Abraham, it is him that God calls Israel for a reason. Just like Joshua's name means Yahweh, Yeshua, Hoshia, the Lord saves. God is wise. These names and these people, because of their obedience, mean something. Believe not every spirit that talks to you. Every spirit is not of God. The other thing I want to show you is that if Adam and Noah did not need a shrine to have communion with God and all they needed was a altar which was merely a pile of rocks to put the altar or to put the sacrifice upon then that's all they used because they were traveling people they had no time to build structures to live in or to worship in because they were people traveling to a place so they did not build any shrines to worship the living God furthermore there are no, as I understand it, by genealogical findings, any other shrines other than the one that you claim is the shrine of Allah, which is in Mecca. And on top of that, long before Muhammad was born, the Kaaba was used for many other things or any, many other worshiping of other idols, I should say, long before Muhammad was born. Where did it come from? Who built it? It has been told to me that Adam built one, Abraham built another one. This is not so. If you look. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala khatim al-anbiya wa al-musalim Muhammad bin Abdullah alayhi akbar sallallahu alayhi wa This gem, where do I start? There's so many things. I have to rush. I would like to answer <laughs> this. Beginning with um, uh, the insinuation that has been made uh, that um, if God actually is the one that uh, uphold Islam, how come in Mecca when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, there were so many idols, there were so many people worshiping this and that? You see, Jesus he, Jesus explained this thing to us so easily. He said, "You hypocrite! Why do you see a mole in your friend's eye when you have a beam in your eye? First, remove the beam so that you have nothing there that will be criticized." Jesus himself make a whip. It's reading the Bible, you know that.